Thanks for staying with us. It's still our brand Daybreak, and it's now time to delve into the Money Motivation segment. On today's edition of the show, we'll be looking at um, how to start a real estate business. And we have with us Lemo Ololade, the CEO of Strorest Limited, joining us to discuss this and more. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Ololade. Good to have you on the show. And compliments of the season. Yeah, wish you the same. All right, so let's begin from the nitty-gritty. What does it take to begin a real estate business? Uh, okay, so um, I think there are two ways in which you can begin a real estate business. It's either you start maybe indirectly or directly. By indirect, I mean um, you can choose to subscribe to real estate investment trust funds. These are companies that you said or the Nigeria Stock Exchange, you buy shares, like buying shares, you know, and then you invest in those companies. So you look for a real estate business and invest in their shares or in the company and get a return. So you don't have to buy properties yourself and manage. This is less stressful, especially if you don't have any knowledge of the industry. And the other part is direct, whereby you actually start a business. You will have a company. And then you go into real estate business. That different aspects. So whether you get direct, direct or you go to this directly. So the problem directly involves more capital because if you are dealing directly, you can start by buying just a piece of portion of the funds or the shares, uh, and you have less risk. But when you are dealing directly, the money you are going into is required in a capital at different scale that which you want to operate. Mm. Okay, you said earlier that um, one can definitely, you know, um, invest in directly or start in directly by investing in companies that into real estate. The question then would be, um, l looking at such investments, on the average, how much do you think will be sufficient for one to invest in such businesses? Okay, so for investment companies, you need to get more amount than two months or two large. Oh. Depends, um, your capacity and the okay. funds that you have available. You know, so but you can start as little as ten thousand, twenty thousand. You grow your portfolio, you understand? Okay. Just that the uh, because the stuff that's traded um on the Nigeria stock market. So you can buy as little as you want, depending on what is available and okay. you have more funds, you keep buying and you come back with different um for me let's say um which is for me it's real estate investment trust fund. Yes. You understand it's that you know the taxes, the you know, and income from such are not that. So there are some advantages, and you know, you are investing in a company that invests in a wide range of portfolios that is strictly in you know, real estate. They don't okay. do investing, other things, whatever they invest in, have to do real estate. So the risk is minimal. It's different from buying shares from a company, maybe a company that is producing a uh, loan, for instance. You understand? But yeah. even after that, you just, you know, the real estate is the new market. Okay. It's up. So they are sure the risk that is involved is less. And they have a wide range of portfolio things. So no matter how little, you can start from any uh, amount and you build your portfolio over time. As your income increases, you have you know, more uh, savings and you oh, can yes. put those things in there. Mm. Yes. Okay. And you have been doing this for nine years now. Talk to us about some of the skills that one needs to be effective in this kind of business. Okay, so one of the things that um, if you are involved, you are going to do it directly. You know, that involves um, you know, setting up a company, registering your company, and there you have to get the uh, certifications and all that. So I think the major thing that you have to be, you have to be very direct. Mm. Because if you are building a house, for instance, if you want to build a business, you are going to be working with quite a large number of people. You have the artisans, you have the masons, you have the carpenters, you have the iron vendors, you have so many people. So you have to be able to coordinate very well. And you also have to work with professionals. So one of the issues that people have, you really do not have to have a full knowledge of the technical details. So you must make sure that you work with the professionals that are technical. Your structure, engineer, your architect, your you must be you just you know, you don't just get the drawing and you post them help. You have to keep them, you have to um, 
have a working relationship with them. They are different things. You can have them on payroll, you can have them on contract basis to reduce you know, your cost. Mm-hmm. But it's important for somebody that is just like, okay, that's where your cost. So, so sorry to about it. I'm wondering how you're able to manage the different artisans that you work with. We know the way artisans can be when it comes to dealing with people and when it comes to you know handling different customers. How do you manage them? And what are some of the challenges you've been able to deal with in this business? Okay, so the, the challenge is you know, on skilled labels are sometimes difficult to manage in the sense that. Um, we are not dealing with a company that has something to protect. So I think the trust is that when you are trying to look for who has a to work with, it's always better to work with me friends. To work with somebody that we friends that okay, we like you the person was referred to you. Oh referrals, okay. That are based in the business. Okay. And um, you let them introduce the people they work with over time. And are proving themselves. And most times, it's always better to have a lead person. So, you want to engage with them. You don't just go out and bring so many crews of different people. You talk to the person, let them have a lead person that is coordinating them, that understands their language. Mm. And you get and that knows them, meet you, meet you. So, that person, he's your own contact person, and you deal with Okay. And so, when you have uh, things you want corrected, when you have the way, that's the person you give information to and is able to relate with them because the person is also but the person you have to ensure that the person is also on site. It's part of the crew that is working, not just somebody that will come and will give information and leave. Part of the working crew. You have to know by then they start working. You can start the ones that have a leadership um, uh, skill amongst them. So you try and bring the person up by okay. like, you know explaining things, making the person you know, giving everybody, when, when you give people responsibility, they really, they want to leave us with you because they know that, okay, if I excel in this, then more will come. You mm. So it's better when you're dealing with those African or two neighbors to look for contact a person, lead person amongst them that you can always relate with and can help you carry others along. Okay. Okay, um, quickly, for, for those who, you know, beyond the um, need to be able to relate with some of these artisans and workers, for those who want to, you know, invest directly in the business, is there a need for them to understand further, probably go for a tutorial you know, of some sort, where they understand the nuances of real estate development? I'm talking about those who have the cash and they probably, you know, have the land readily to start the business. Okay, so you have the cash. You mm-hmm. have the land, yes. and you want to go to business, but you don't know where to start. I think um, there are companies that offer professional services that are project managers. Okay. But, and there are some that are specific to construction. They're not just you know, project construction managers. So I think for such, whether you engage in company that does that, or you look for individual construction managers or builders, that you can bring into your team because the truth about it, you know, like I keep saying, um, structures you can't neglect the face of the professionals. Yes, you have the money and you have the resources, the land with which you want to develop, but you need somebody that has the technical know how of okay. the industry to mm. lead you. And you can now, what you can do is that you know, you just, if you want, this is something that you want to continue, is that once you get that chapter on your team, yes. you, you can learn under that person. Okay. As the project is going, you understand. Even yes. people engineers that have had ten years experience, they learn on the job also. Okay. You understand. The more so the more projects you're taking, the more experience, the more issues that come and you're able to solve them, the more you are readily available, readily equipped to do a lot that. You understand? So yes. you have to you know just if you want to continue, it's not just about investing because um the structural integrity of your building also matters. Exactly, especially <laughs> with the uh, you know the recurrent building collapses uh-huh. we've been experiencing in the country. But talk to us about how you build your client base and also your word of advice to those who would like to go into this business in the nearest future. So building your client base, I think first is that when you want to go into such business, look at 
who are the people that you have access to. So the kind of people you have access to will determine the kind of structures that you will build, whether you want to go for the low income, whether you want to go for the middle class or the luxury end of the building, you understand. So mm-hmm. what is access? Who are the people that you have access to? That your immediate environment, because those are the people that you know. Okay, so for for my business, when I was when I was working, the company I was working with, I remember we did an estate in the but I was like one hundred and ten units. The first subscribers were my every family members, and then from them, one of my oh, I got this property here, it's very nice, you know. And then you also have to, you know, so and then you have to market. You just have to, you know, go to offices, go to companies. People, I think, I think um, real estate is, um, people will invest based on information that they have. There are people that have money, but if there's nothing they want to do with this, they want to buy cars, they buy new cars, and also they understand, they're able to reach out to those people, let them understand the game. And, you know, you have to let them understand the game that they will get from real estate. Okay, if you invest, there are many options. It's either you sell your land, it's either you build or this, you can leave, you can, you know, there are so many options. All right, oh, we're yeah. really pressed for time. So we'll just get your final words to those out there coming into the business. Is that my final word will be get into, get your hands dirty. You have to put, you have to put your money and you have to put effort. Mm. Money alone cannot give the last legacy in real estate. You have to be on site. You have yeah. to be on the field to be able to exert. All right, we'll yes. leave it there now. Thank you so much for your time on the show, LMO Lola Day, CEO of True Rest Limited. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on real estate business this morning. Thanks, everyone. Have a Thanks. fine day.